Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. We appreciate your name, O Lord, for how you have been moving with us in this journey of the Spirit. We say may your name be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. That we continue in the move of the Spirit on this same spiritual reality of knowing the difference between the Word of God and the Word from God. We pray you minister to us by yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray you let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened from one dimension of spiritual possibility to another dimension of supernatural possibility in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I pray the Lord will bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Just tell somebody beside you that you are welcome to Time to Eat Conference Room of Immortality this morning. And the grace of the Lord will not depart from your life for eight seconds in the mighty name of Jesus. We begin a certain teaching yesterday of the reality of the difference between the word of God and the word from God. And I establish a certain fact that there are different between the word of God and the word from God. And also throw a certain question into the heart of those that are following us that what is the difference between the word of God and the word from God. And I also say it again that what is the word of God? Is it a person or a written document? Is it a holy Bible or a person? And I establish a fact that the Bible is not the word of God, but the Bible is a book that contains the word of God. In order to fight against that, I see many people have come to the understanding that the Bible is the only word of God. But I say this clearly today that the Bible is not the only word of God, but it's all, it is only the written word of God. Underline that statement. The Bible is not the only word of God, but the Bible is the only written word of God. That is, it's the only eternal consti uh, constitution that God has given to us to govern the earthly realm. That is the Holy Bible is the heavenly constitution that was constitution that was given to us to live by as eternal principle that will govern the earthly realm. So it's the only written document, is the only legal written document from God to man, piled up by men as they were moved by the Spirit. But I say this categorically that the Bible is not the only word of God. There are three dimensions of the pattern through which God has, has been speaking to us and through which he will continue to speak to us. The first one is the living epistle. The second one is the written epistle. And the third one is the handwriting of God in the natural. <laughs> I, I repeat, the first one is the living epistle, which is the person of Christ and you because you are also a living epistle that the word is ordained to read and Jesus is the primarily living epistle is the word that became flesh and dwell among men so the person of Jesus is the word that the Old Testament was pointing us to the person of Jesus is the word that the New Testament was expressing so the Old Testament is not the word, it's pointing us to the word. The New Testament is not the word, it's expressing the word. The person of Christ is the word of God. So the word of God is not a written document, the word of God is a person. The word of God is not Holy Bible, the word of God is a person of Christ. So and you become flesh and dwells among man. The word of God did not become book and dwell among man. The word of God become flesh and dwells among man. So the primarily word of God that comes into the atmosphere and the corridor of man is the living epistle called man, called God, called Jesus. So and the second living epistle is you. The Bible says we are the living epistle. That is, we are the one that should begin to express the dimension of God. There are certain dimensions of God you cannot read in the Bible, but you can read in my life. I said that with all honesty. <laughs> because I am been ordained to reveal a certain dimension of God. Paul revealed a certain dimension of God. He's a living epistle. Peter that we are studying his word is a living epistle. He revealed a certain dimension of God. There is a uniqueness in Bangladesh that is not in any person in the whole world. 
There is a uniqueness in you that is not in anybody in the whole world. And that uniqueness is expressing a certain dimension of, of the personality of God. I repeat, there is a dimension of uniqueness that is in every one of us on this earth. And that dimension of uniqueness is expressing a certain personality of God. It's expressing a certain dimension of the nature of God. So I say this with honesty that there is a dimension of personality of God that is in Banjoayeka that you cannot see anywhere in the world, that you cannot see anywhere in the scripture until you study me. <laughs> because I'm the, I'm the visible creation of the invisible God. I am created in his image. And there is a dimension of his image finding expression in my life. The same thing to you. So you are a living epistle. So the only reality is that the Bible is now the written epistle. You are the living epistle. Jesus is the living epistle. You, the scripture, is the living epistle. Is the written epistle. So the, both the living epistle and the written epistle must not contract themselves. The moment the living epistle is contracted, the written epistle is a pure evidence that the nature you are expressing is no longer the nature of God, it's now the nature of the devil. <laughs> I repeat. The moment the written epistle, the living epistle is contradicting the written epistle. Because all by divine ordination, the written epistle must not contradict the living epistle. The living epistle must not also contradict the written epistle. They must comprehend each other. But the moment the written epistle, the living epistle is not contradicting the written epistle. It means something is wrong with the living epistle, which is you, which is me. But nothing is wrong with the written epistle. It means something is wrong with the living epistle. So what's the problem is there are certain dimensions of the nature of the flesh, there are certain dimensions of the nature of the devil that is finding expression in your life which is not supposed to be so. God created the diamond in his own image. That is, the plan of God is that you should look at the diamond and behold God. That this is an express image of the personality of God. But when Adam fell, he lost the image of God and put on the image of the devil. So if you want to know devil, now you don't study Adam. <laughs> if you want to know Satan very well, you study Adam. Because you begin to study the offspring, the dimension of the nature coming through Adam, they are revealing a certain dimension of the personality of the devil. Cain was the first personality that came out from Adam and he began to reveal a certain dimension of the personality of the devil. He key. And when God, Jesus, began to express that certain dimension, he said, you have your father, the devil. He is a murderer from the beginning. Who is he talking about? Satan. Who was the first murderer? Cain. <laughs> I repeat, who was Jesus talking with? Was Jesus referring to? Satan. But who was the first murderer? Cain. Which simply means Jesus, Cain, was expressing the personality of Satan. So the fall of man begin to make man to begin to express the personality of Satan, begin to express the personality of demon when they're supposed to be expressing the personality of God. So if you want to know Satan, you study man after the fall of man. That was why Jesus looked at Peter and he said, get behind me, Satan. Because that is the reflection of the manifestation of the nature of Satan. But the moment we are not born again, we have received a life of God. The eternal life is in us. And that eternal life is a complete whole word of God. Hey, 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 hey. The eternal life, I repeat, is the complete whole word of God. So when you receive eternal life, you, re you, you receive the complete counsel of God. You, re you receive the complete personality of God. You receive the complete word of God. So as, as the world begins to find expression in you, you begin to become transformed into the living epistle that the world is expected to be reading. Can I say this to you clearly? Can I say this to you? The world prefer to read you than read the Bible. One. Two. The world can, this can understand God in you than understanding God in the Bible. That's the word. Kai. The people of this earth can understand God in you than understanding God in the Bible. So your life is ordained to reveal a certain dimension of God that men cannot understand if they read it in the Bible. The Bible is not meant to the world, it's meant to the church. 
I repeat, the Bible is not meant for the world. The Bible is meant for the church. Your life is the one that should go into the world. When you are going into the world, you don't open Bible to them. You open a certain dimension of the nature of Christ, finding expression in your life, either in time of power or in time of wisdom. When they begin to see the handwriting of the supernatural, finding expression in your life, they will know you are a man that comes from God because no man can do the dimension of the supernatural you are manifesting except the Lord is with him. I don't know if somebody is getting what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> so the, church, the scripture, the Bible is meant for the church. So when you are going to the world and you are holding Bible, you are going to cause arguments. They will argue it because the eyes of the understanding cannot, cannot read, cannot see the reality that is embedded in the scripture. But their eyes can see the reality that is embedded in your life. That's why I say we should be a witness. A witness is that you speak a dimension of God and your life is confirmation of what you are talking about. So you have to understand the living epistle, which is Jesus and you. The second is the, writ, is the written epistle, which is the Bible. Then the third is the handwriting of the supernatural in the nature. That is everything God created on it is talking about a certain dimension of the things in the, in the, in the, in the realm of the spirit. It's just like me. Maybe I, I created the house. Maybe I, I built the house, I mean to say it. Then I'm using that house to express certain things to you. When you study the house I built, you can understand what is in my mind. Or I draw something. You, if, if you study what I draw, you can understand what I'm trying to say. So, there are certain ways you communicate by drawing something. You can communicate by creating something. So, things that God created on earth express a certain dimension of the reality that is in the mind of God. So, God wants us to study the things that are visible for us to understand the things that are invisible. And the Romans chapter 1 verses 20 gives us a clear expression of that dimension. And I also said again that 80 or 95 percent of the teaching of Jesus, it was a dimension of using the things in the environment to explain the things in the spirit. Jesus never sat his disciples down and began to open Bible to them. He used the things in the environment. The word of God is like a mustard seed. The things in the environment. The word of God, the word of God is 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 like a a a, a treasure. Or it's like a, king, a man in a kingdom looking for a treasure using the things in the environment. I am, a, I am the tree, you are the branches using the things in the environment. I am the way using the things in the environment. I am the, I am the life using the things in the environment. I am the light using the things in the environment. And Paul also entered into this economy and he entered and he began to use things. Many, many teachings of Paul also, it was a reality of using the things in the environment to express spiritual reality. And we see that kind of, kind of example in the book of Ephesians chapter 6. When he was using the, the reality of the way the Roman Empire dressed, their military Roman Empire dressed, and he began to use that pattern to express how we should put on the armor of God. He, was, he didn't see any that dimension in, 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 in Jeremiah or in Abaku. He was using things in the environment. That is, he began to use the highest, the, 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 the bread place was the tools that they use as a bulletproof then. So if Paul want to write that same st- that same efficient, he won't say bullet bare place, he will say bulletproof. He said the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Sword was the highest weapon of warfare, de- warfare then. The highest weapon of warfare then was sword. But now sword wasn't the highest weapon of warfare. So if you say the word of God is a sword of the spirit now, it's as if your mind is as not renewed to see the lens through which you can understand the things of the spirit. Because now, the, word, the sword is not the highest weapon of warfare. So, you cannot say the word of God is an atomic bomb now. <laughs> ah! <laughs> the word of God is a nuclear weapon. <laughs> so, everything Paul was trying to express to us, he was using things in the environment to express spiritual reality. And we also saw a man of centurions also enter into this dimension and Jesus said, I want to heal you. He, 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 he called for Jesus to heal his daughter like that. And Jesus said, I'm coming. He said, no, you don't need to come to my house. He said, I'm a man under authority. I speak and, my, uh, and, and the centurions under me obey. And the same to you also, you, by your word, the authority can be established. And Jesus looked at him and said, no, I have not seen this kind of faith. What simply means there is a kind of faith you can build by looking at the things in the environment to express spiritual reality. Everything in the environment is talking about a certain dimension of God. I do say it clearly that if you want to know God the Father, Bible didn't express the reality of God the Father. 
The scripture express give us the pure revelation of God the judge. The scripture give us pure revelation of God the, 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 the master. It give us pure revelation of God the king. It give us pure revelation of God the creator. But the scripture doesn't give us enough pure revelation about God the father. If you want to understand God the father, study the father in your environment. Study a father that loves his son. If you are a son, study the way your father loves you. If you are a father, study the way you love your father. That is the pattern through which God wants you to relate with him in this dispensation. So these are the three patterns through which God wants us to know him. One, by the living epistle. Two, by the written epistle. Three, by the handwriting of the supernatural in the environment. That is why I say it with authority that the Bible is not the only word of God. Bible is the only written word of God. But Bible is not the only word of God. Because you are also the word of God. Jesus is the word of God. Everything in the environment are also the word of God. They express spiritual reality. So the reason why the reason why God gives us written word is simply because there is no revelation you should be talking about that you must not be able to find the confirmation of it in the Bible. That this Bible is a guideline through which, in respective of the source of your revelation, we must be able to see confirmation of what you are saying in the Bible. So if you come with a new revelation and there is no scripture to back it up, it's a sign that the source of your revelation is not correct because the spirit is one and the spirit cannot be contradicting himself. The same spirit that was up, uh, upon Paul that made him to enter into the realm of the spirit to download a certain dimension of revelation, that same spirit, if it's also upon you, everything the same spirit will be communicating to you will not contradict what Paul has written. Everything the same spirit will be talking to you will not contradict what Peter has written. Kai. Oh, the ghost. Hmm. The I don't know if somebody is getting the dimension at which I'm communicating. That's why I said you have to follow my teaching one after the other, so that you will not think maybe I'm underrating the Bible. No, I'm not underrating the Bible, but I'm my fear. Or for the body of Christ is that we should not allow the written word of God to be an hindrance for us to have access to the person of God. Because the Bible is not the end, it's a means to an end. Mm. I repeat, the scripture is not the end. So that you know the Bible is not the end point. There are many people that know the Bible and nothing supernatural is happening about their works. Nothing spiritual is happening about their life. Why? They make scripture to be the end point. But the Bible is not the end point. The word of God is not the end point. The word of God is a means to an end. When Jesus came, he didn't say, I am the end. He said, I am the way. There are difference between the way and the end. What simply means there are way you are going somewhere, and Jesus now say, "Hide the word is the way, and you not make the word the end." The plan of God is for us to have access to Him. The person of the of God having access, having a encounter with the person of God is the end. Is the end of is the end of the reality of your existence on earth, and the beginning of the reality of your existence in heaven. So. When Jesus himself, that is that was the word that became flesh, he never said him, he never said he's the hand to the whole matter. We now make scripture, we block it, we present scripture before our congregation and make it as if he is the he is the end of everything. No, no, no. Maleko Shantaya. Jesus himself said, if Jesus himself that became flesh, we say, I am the way. How will the Bible become the hands to an, to an, becomes the hand to the reality of our pursuit? The Bible is the way. The word of God is the way. Jesus is the way through which you have access to the person of God. He said it in the book of John chapter 14 verse 6. He said no man can come to the Father except through me. Which simply means the moment you are born again, there is a journey to the Father. Halakada, halakada. And the moment you meet the Father, there must be an evidence. Your life must come with supernatural results. <laughs> you can't have a counter with Father and your life will remain the same. Ah, uh, when you have a counter with the world and you don't have a counter with the Father, you become religion. You become religion. The highest thing you will just be talking about is that everything is not about gifts. You now be saying everything is about fruit of the Spirit. Everything is not about gifts. Who told you? How can, you how can the fruit of the Spirit manifest in your life and the gift of the Spirit will not manifest? 
If the fruit of the Spirit is the only one manifesting in your life and there is no tangible heaviness gift of the Spirit, that the body of Christ can know that this is the, F, the gift of the Spirit is a sign that that fruit of the Spirit is not fruit of the Spirit, it's a fruit of religion. It's a fruit of religion. Because the same, the same Spirit that produces fruit out of you should be able to produce gift of the Spirit out of you. Because we don't, we, don't, we don't rule on this earth with only the fruit. We rule on this kingdom with both the fruit and the gifts of the Spirit. So your life must be able to find the expression of these two dimensions of spiritual possibility. And until you have the counter with the person of God, your life remains the same in this kingdom. Even though you know Bible from Genesis to Revelation, it's not, it's not an excuse. <laughs> you can look around, we have many of them. The highest thing they do is argument. Their life is void of resource. So they only have financial testimony as an evidence that they know God. Jesus said, he said, no man can come to the Father except through me. You can come, you can have everything on this earth without Jesus, but you can't get to the Father and enter into the supernatural without Jesus. So your testimony that you give your life to Christ after salvation is not financial blessing, it's a spiritual blessing, a spiritual possibility, finding expression in your life. Enough is enough from all this decadence of liquidation pastors that we have in the body of Christ. Enough is enough. Share the testimony of financial possibility as a, as a, as a yastic of, 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 of a counter with Jesus. You don't need to be born again to make money, you need to be born on it. <laughs> and if you don't need to be born again to be financially blessed you only need to be born on it that again that you are entitled to from God because you are born on it and that again you are entitled to from God because you are born again I met a brother who was sharing testimony after his salvation he got a job in Florida government job uh, his business is going well. I just said with him I said I met this sir have those testimony Abu Bakr how do have those testimony Shangobumi have those testimony. So, what are the testimony that you can show to generation that is an evidence that this kind of testimony can only be got in through Christ? That is our testimony in the body in the body of Christ of the world. And you cannot have spiritual blessing manifesting in you until you have a counter with the person of God. It's not about knowing Bible, it's about knowing God. You can know Bible and not know God. He said, those that know their God. He said they shall be strong. And one of the evidence is that they will do exploits. If you are not doing exploits in this kingdom, it's a sign that you only know Bible, you don't know God. <laughs> ah, I repeat, he said, those that know their God, they shall be strong. They shall be strong. And two, they will do exploits. If you're not doing exploits, it's a pure evidence that you don't know the God of the Father. And what is the key? No man can come to me except through the word. So the word is not an end. It's a means to an end. It's a means to an end. And for you to begin to journey through the realm where you begin to have access and a counter to the person of God, you must enter into a realm where your life begins to experience the word from God. The word from God is a tool that draws you into the supernatural. <laughs> ah! Ah, shantaya. Ah, you need to know the difference between the word of God and the word from God. The word of God is a guardian for you to live right and wrong, to know the difference between good and evil. It takes the word from God to draw you into the supernatural. It's an encounter. Something draws you inside the house. You stay alone with God. Everybody were busy running after money. Something lock you up inside the realm of the spirit. That dimension of thing that lock you up in the secret place, longing after God, is what we call the word from God. Ah, so and that is what we are talking about now your life will be void of a counter if all you know is the written word of God your life will be void of a counter if all you know is the bible in your hand but because the bible said the letter kill it it kill it it is the spirit that gives it life not the word the spirit gives it life not the word so you must have access to the source of the word which is the spirit of God can you see now I gave one illustration yesterday. 
Let me repackage the illustration so that you will get clear understanding of what I'm, trying, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say. For you to know that the plan of God in the New Testament is not for us to have a counter with the world. It's for us to have a counter with the Spirit. The New Testament is built upon the foundation of the Spirit, not the foundation of the world. The Old Testament, God sent His word to them. The New Testament, God sent His Spirit to us. The moment you have the Spirit, you have the source of the world. It's just like you came to me and I gave you my book. And also gave you my spirit. Which one will you choose? <laughs> my spirit or my book? <laughs> or oh, I gave you myself and I gave you my, my book. Which one will you choose? Religion has stay with book. They lost the person of God. And God in the New Testament doesn't came to give us book. He came to give us himself. We, he is our inheritance. He wants to dwell in you. He wants to stay inside of you. He wants to fellowship with you. He wants to take you out of the realm of worship and launch you into the realm of fellowship. Understanding the word of God from the word from God. And I pray God will bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. See you tomorrow in series three.